Okay, yeah. So one thing that I think a lot about is what makes us uniquely human. Science has basically demolished many of the things we always thought of as traditionally human, things like the ability to communicate, uh, emotion, these are all things that we can now see in animals. But one thing I think remains uniquely human is creativity and artistic sense. Where does this go back to? The obvious easy answer is to go to cave paintings, and this is the second time Lasso has appeared tonight. So we could go to cave paintings in Lasso of around 12,000 years old. We could go further back than this. We don't even need to go abroad. We can go to Creswell Crags in Derbyshire, where they etch into the rocks and have created these things that are around 25, 30,000 years old, some of the oldest um, rock art in this country, and they create all these symbolic things. But we can go further back still, I think. This is little shells that have been made into jewellery, pendants and things like that. But what's particularly interesting about this is that this isn't Homo sapiens that did this. This is Homo neanderthalensis, another species of human engaging in artistic, creative practices. It was found at site like this in Atapuerca, where they also found really remarkable things like burials of Neanderthals, where they surrounded them with painted cave bear skulls, a really creative way of thinking even about death. Can we go further than that? Yes, we can. We can go to these little remarkable shape and form etchings into a shell. This is around half a million years old. This was done by Homo erectus. So we're going even further back. And this is about how far I would have thought we could take this idea. Until in 2008, I was working on this exhibition with the British Museum called Made in Africa. When I was working on this, I was looking at these hand axes, these basic, efficient stone tools, and there was one particular one that really captured my imagination. It was this pinky purple quartzite one, which as you can see here, the picture doesn't do it justice. It's a really beautiful thing, it sort of sparkles and shines and glimmers, a really remarkably beautiful object. But the interesting thing about it is, functionally, it's crap. <laughs> it's a really terrible stone to make into a stone axe. It was found here in Olderby Gorge, around two, and it was about two million years old. The first human species ever on the planet, Homo habilis. So if they were making this really crap stone axe, was it because they just basically didn't know what they were doing? And I think we can dismiss that argument. We have evidence that they made really efficient stone tools out of really good materials. And it wasn't just the case of what was near to hand. They would carry materials hundreds of miles away from where they actually collected them in order to be able to have a good supply with them of the right materials at all times. And they were experimenting with the different types of tool they could have. So is this another question? Is it an experimentation? Did they have, find this rock and think, well, I'll have a go at this and see if it works, and no, it didn't. Well, again, we can dismiss that. One, it's kept its shape perfectly, so they haven't actually been knocking it about too much, and so you can sometimes see with some of these sort of things. So they've kept it as it was, and again, they've transported it hundreds of miles away from where the source of the rock is, so they're thinking more about the object. An archaeologist would easily go to the obvious answer for an object like this, <coughs> ritual use. If you don't know an archaeologist, ritual use is what they say when they don't know an answer. <laughs> That's all ritual use means. I think there's a much better explanation for what this sort of object was doing. William Morris said that you should have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And I do not see why the earliest humans can't have had the exact same notion in their head, and why they couldn't have been doing this. As a species, we have taken the most basic elements, the most basic needs that we have, shelter, which we could perfectly well live in a cave still. Instead, we create these really elaborate, ornate rooms to live in. Food, a really boring, functional thing that we've dressed up, and we've gone for this notion that the first bite is with the eye, and we make it as pretty and lovely and wonderful and interesting as possible. Even the most mundane and boring and dull facets of our lives, the most basic needs that we have, reproduction, such a mundane thing that we have dressed up into the most elaborate, over-thought-out positions and accoutrements and all sorts of strange <laughs> guides to take us through it. Tremendous fun, not at all necessary. <laughs> so if I have a point, it's that creativity and artistic sense are the deepest root of things in us and we should embrace them as part of our humanity. You may be an aspiring artist like Monkey Jesus Lady. You may just have a great book in you like Harper Lee did, as she may not have a second great book in her, as we soon discover. You may want to do anything that is expressing your creativity. It may even be as small a matter as doing a better culture random slide challenge. But whatever it is, take that creativity, take the best and most deep part of your humanity, embrace it and indulge it at all times. Thank you very much.